Welcome back home brewers of YouTube. Uh, I just wanted to take a quick moment to talk about dry yeast. There's uh, one thing that absolutely drives me insane when it comes to people talking about using dry yeast and that is aeration. You do not need to aerate dry yeast, okay? This yeast is about to go in here. I have not aerated it at all. It's kind of nice because you don't have to you know, spend the time doing that. You don't have to shake it. You don't have to use your aeration pump. You don't have to put uh, pure oxygen into it. Not that I don't do that. When I do do that when I'm using liquid yeast. I create a starter and I um, aerate the wort. Now, people are like, what do you mean you don't gotta use uh, aeration when you're using dry yeast? They need that. Well, no, they don't. The reason why is, uh, I mean, it doesn't hurt your yeast to do it, but you don't need to. And the reason why is, um, you know, during its aerobic production, dry yeast accumulates sufficient amounts of unsaturated fatty acids and sterols to produce enough biomass in the first stage of fermentation. The reason to aerate the wort when using wet yeast is to provide the yeast with oxygen so that it can produce sterols and unsaturated fatty acids which are important in parts of the cell membrane and therefore essential for biomass production. Okay, so all that stuff's already been done so you don't need to do it and I'm reading it off of a piece of paper because um, I knew I wouldn't remember all the names of all that stuff when it came down to it. So uh, if you are re-pitching dry yeast so you've already used it once, now you took your slurry and you're gonna pitch it into another batch of beer then you have to aerate it, okay? But when you're pitching it straight out of a package, like I'm about to do right now, you don't need to aerate it. And I have made many beers with it now. Well, I shouldn't say many, but I've made, I made a few. And every single one of them, I have done without aeration and they have dropped in three days, they've been down to 1.010 or 1.009. Now the other thing too is that you can rehydrate dry yeast. Um, I have done it that way and I don't really see that big of a difference in a beer that's, this is only a 1.42 you know, beer. It's not a huge beer. So there's plenty of yeast cells in there to, uh, to uh, you know, ferment this beer without any problems. So I'm not gonna worry about it. I like to give it a gentle shake just to get them Get everything all moist in there and you're good to go. So anyway, next time somebody tells you you have to aerate dry yeast, tell them to shut up. They're full of crap, but they don't know what they're talking about. Cheers.